Yo friend, what is up? Levi Allen here from Left Coast Media House. And today I'm gonna to show you how to quickly track 3D titles in After Effects. This is something that I've started to do in the episodes of Left Coast Life. So I figured what better way to quickly teach it than at the beginning of an episode of Left Coast Life. This is an example of kind of what I'm gonna be showing today. It's a very straightforward process and uh, we're just gonna kind of look at how to do this and I'll talk through my process. The basics of it is, is I'm importing a shot into After Effects, adding 3D camera tracking to it, solving for a camera, and then adding in titles in 3D space and moving them around to kind of line up where I want them to be. Uh, that's kind of the basics of what we're doing. So if you're wanting the basics, just throw in the 3D camera tracker, solve, create camera, and you've got a 3D space to work in. But I'm gonna walk you through that if you don't know what any of that means. So let's kind of look at uh, the After Effects project here. Just gonna rotate over here. Since I haven't edited today's vlog yet because we're in the middle of it, uh, let's pull in the shot already from my vlog folder. So this is where I store the vlogs as I'm working on them. In my A7S reel, we go over here. This is where the time lapses are kept. Um, so we have a few options to pick through for today. Let's so maybe just go with something straightforward like this one, because that should be pretty obvious where the where the depth plane is. Oh, so let's open that. We're just going to make a new sequence out of it because again, I'm not dynamic linking over. Um, I'll maybe explain that a bit and how I time it with music after the fact, but let's just go through the basics of it right now. So we're looking for the 3D camera tracker over here in effects and presets. I'm going to drag that over my clip and then immediately it begins analyzing the shot. And then in the meantime, I go over to where I store my titles. I've been making my titles, especially since I've been doing this 3D camera tracking, I just make them in Premiere. Uh, sorry, in Photoshop. So that way it's like really easy to just drag them in and update them each time. So every time that I make a new vlog, I just duplicate the folder and change the, the info. That way it makes it really easy to know which episode number you are because you're just duplicating the last folder. And so all you have to do is move it forward one and it makes it really easy not to forget which number you're on. So by default, when you import your text layers, they're set into 2D space essentially in your working area here, here in After Effects. Um, but you can enable them into 3D space by just checking these boxes right here. And once we've done that, it gives us new position data. It gives us essentially this Z plane, um, Z plane, uh, Americans, Canadians, however you want to say it, uh, where you can push uh, your titles into 3D space. Um, so right here, the shot has just finished um, tracking. So it's going to solve for a camera. And now we're going to create a camera. Look at that. So you can see these tracked points, but we're not really too worried about that. Um, if you had a shot that has contrast in it, it should be able to solve for a camera. Um, some other things you can do is while selecting that shot with 3D camera selected, you can like click on these little points and create things based off that. But I don't do that. I just solve for camera and it creates a 3D camera down there. You don't need to touch that. But now that we have 3D enabled on these layers, it allows us to push them through 3D space and see how they kind of react to the environment around them. So I'm gonna turn my, I'm gonna go down to a third so I can scroll a little better. So as you can see, I pushed it into the Z plane there and that essentially lined it up exactly with that like one spot on the grass. Cause I usually, I mean, I think it makes sense to kind of like anchor it in like one section. So if I move it forward on the Z plane, Let's go forward, like closer towards the camera. Um, and then if I drag it down just a touch, that should look like it's on the lawn kind of right there. And that's kind of the gist of it. It's like really straightforward um, as far as that stuff goes. And then when I get fancy later, that's when I do the timing, like going in between them. So often I'll, uh, you can get to the position data by selecting the layer, hitting P, it pulls up the position. Um, and I just kind of select the other two after copying the position data of one that I liked its depth and paste it to the other two, um, kind of as a reference point, especially if the camera moved a lot. And then I'll drag these ones, um, to where I want them to start. And then, so it's going to come down and I probably want that one further in. So as we come down through this, we're going to go boom right there. And I'm going command shift D on the layer that I want to chop and then just deleting that tail end. I don't know if there's a faster way to do that. Um, boom, episode 20. There we go. I'm going to chop it there. Uh, 
And so as you can see, as the time lapse moves forward, the titles track in perspective with the camera that we're created, we've created. That's like the really quick, straightforward process. And I, I would probably go in there and I would actually modify the rotation just a touch probably on these just to like make it look like it's in the scene a little bit more. Um, matching a title to the scene like becomes a lot easier when there's foreground elements. So I tracked one to like the stairs the other day and that worked pretty well. But this is like new to me and sometimes the track isn't very solid and you can see the objects aren't sticking, uh, sticking to the scene. They kind of like wiggle a little bit. Um, I don't know, the, I'm assuming there's a way you could probably smooth out the keyframes of the camera to like solve that, but I don't really know. Um, so I've, if I don't have a good track, I will go in, go to advanced and go detailed analysis. But that's kind of the gist of that. One other thing that I've been experimenting with when I'm doing this with drone shots is actually adding like a Gaussian blur, it's called, or like a fast lens blur. We could just do Gaussian blur though. Gaussian blur, I'll throw that onto one of the layers. And then, so let's find out. So that's the location layer. Let's drop down the effects um, and then turn on keyframing for it. And then just kind of like, so right now the blurriness is at zero. That's what that keyframe is. And let's say we want it to like come in. Usually, usually something like that's good. So if the drone shot's moving through 3D space, I'll have it like blur the shot so it looks like it's going out of focus. Uh, but that's how you do this, guys. It's really straightforward. The 3D camera tracker works really well. And if you have any other questions about that or other tutorials that you'd like to know, just uh, drop them in the comments. I'm not very adept at after Effects, I don't spend a lot of time there. Um, I'm mainly only ever using it for like titles. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing. So if you have any other tips that could help out this process, feel free to let me know. Hey friend, welcome out of the time warp that was this vlog episode. So we're picking up here and today, let's just talk about today so far. It's been a computer day. Uh, my main goal was to finish the pitch for a contract slash proposal that I've been putting together and also work on editing the Slack Life series. I haven't been doing an amazing job at either of those. Uh, what's been holding me back is putting together this pitch. It's been like, something that I've known is really important to do well for like several days, even weeks now. And the longer that I push it off, the harder it becomes to start slash finish because I feel like it's really important. And that kind of all compounds on itself. And, and so that's the state I have found myself in today. And as a result, I've been procrastinating doing the real hard work that I need to do to make pushing forward the goal possible. So I'm gonna break all that for now. I'm just gonna try end this distraction loop. Um, I'm gonna go for a run actually. The, the weather's a bit warmer today, even though it's a little bit rainy-ish. So I'm gonna go for a run, break the distraction loop, and then come back at this with a vengeance. <laughs> okay, so I'm just getting ready to take off here. Uh, and I had actually posted something on my Instagram story. Uh, I was listening to some podcasts and time lapse and, and my buddy Kale Wojcik, DIY video guy, asked what podcast I was listening to. So I'm going to leave the camera here, but before I take off, I'll tell you some of the podcasts I've been digging lately. I've been listening to a little bit of the James Altucher show, Modern Cinematographer, a little bit of that from Matt Workman. As entertainment, I've been kind of binging Reply All from Gimlet. Um, I really like their startup podcast series. There's some really good ones in there. I always listen to the new episodes from This American Life and also um, Tim Ferriss' show, I listened to most of the interviews there. So there's been some really good filmmaking ones. <laughs> One called Good from Christian Schultz and Jared Hogan. Uh, but they've stopped putting out episodes for now. That's kind of annoying. You guys should get on that. Also, Art versus Commerce from Jared Levy. Yeah, so that's it. Gonna leave the camera here, go for a run, and uh, I'll come back. <laughs>
just came back from a quick run, drinking strawberries, spinach, milk, and yogurt. We're short on some of the ingredients, so this isn't my best tasting creation, but uh, it'll do the trick for now. It's been hard to run lately because I've like gotten a cold, um, but today's been the best feeling day, so I knew I had to get outside. It's like really helpful to get outside, uh, especially when you're stuck in a rut. I find that really, really helpful, especially if you're listening to something motivating on a podcast or something like that. It's really cool. Um, but I'm excited to get over this cold so that way I don't have to keep editing out me hacking in between vlog takes and like me clearing the phlegm from my throat every couple seconds. Ridiculous. Okay, so I finished off today with some time behind the computer, smashed out a quick session uh, of editing and now I'm packing up gear because tomorrow I'm leaving on a shoot. I will tell you about it. We are going to the city. I'm gonna be filming with my A7S. Uh, that's the 20 mil that I did some work on the other day. Well, specifically the adapter. Um, so I'm taking this kind of as like my documentary rig with the Video Mic Pro. Then I'm taking a 50 mil and also a 35 mil. And then none other than my trusty monopod, which I've made a video about that you can find. That's kind of my simple kit. Not tons of gear. I like to run pretty light, especially when I'm doing like dock style stuff. And that's definitely what I'm doing tomorrow. So gonna head into the city, looking forward to it. That's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed a bit of a tutorial at the start of today, um, but we're gonna close it off here. Got an early start tomorrow and uh, that's all for now. Remember, life's better when you make stuff.